Hey, there we go. Serverside development and rock and roll. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh. Morning, everyone. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. My turn to talk now. Okay. Time for software. Can you hear me? I'm going to start. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's it. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan, R&D team lead at Yachtpo, and I'd like to explain how a JavaScript mistake can cost you $200 million. Let's start off with a brief explanation of Yachtpo. Um, I'd like you to picture a marketer today and the amount of different platforms they have to work with, um, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, and many, many more. Um, each of these platforms requires a basic understanding of how this platform works, best practices, and so on. Um, this creates a very hectic and overwhelming work environment, and we solve this by creating a central, con hub, central content creation hub, Yachtpo. Our platform makes it very easy to generate user content, and even easier to dispatch said user content um, to Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and etc. in order to engage with existing users, or as advertisements on said networks in order to attract new users to your brand. Um, as of today, we're serving a bit over 150,000 stores, 300 million monthly end users, which create 3 billion impressions of dynamic content a month. We send out 30 million personalized emails monthly. We create about half a million reviews on a monthly basis, and we collect about half a tera, half a gig, I'm sorry, half a tera of data on a daily basis. All right, so let's talk about what happened. Um, Yachtpo provides several widgets that our customers can embed in their websites, and we deployed code to these widgets that basically broke jQuery. Um, if a website uses jQuery and you break jQuery, you broke the website. There's no other way of looking at it. Um, we deployed a polyfill. It's the, a polyfill for JavaScript, um, which I'll get to in a second, but before, I'd like to talk about the actual timeline of what happened. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how we reached the $200 million figure, so let's dive into that for a sec. Um, we took the average hourly order values of each of our customers who were harmed by this, and the total downtime, as you can see, is about three and a half hours. Um, so by doing the math, um, we cost our clients about $200 million. Not a nice thing to do to anyone, especially to people who are paying you money and trust you. <laughs> um, so a few funny stories about this night. Um, Vlad, our chief architect, ran the, ran the sanity check at 7.30, saw everything was fine, and left to an event, um, to a company event with his girlfriend. She made sure about a month in advance that he'd be available, because Vlad is a very, very, very busy person. Um, and obviously, as soon as he got there, five minutes afterwards, he had to come right back to the office. The office was hectic, tons of people, um, support tickets, tickets on Twitter, people were posting on Facebook. Um, we managed to solve everything. I think we headed home at around midnight. And the next morning, uh, Nathaniel, our head of QA, had an interview. And I feel sorry for the interviewee because he was practically sleeping um, in front of him. So that wasn't very nice. Um, let's dive into some code. All right, so as I said, we built a polyfill um, in JavaScript for the object compact method. Um, we thought we were being safe because, as you can see, we didn't override the existing method. The problem with this is that um, our widget is very compact and lean, and jQuery is a bit, um, I have to ch carefully choose my words right now. Um, it's a bit bigger, let's put it that way. Um, this created a race condition, and in Internet Explorer browsers that, don't impl that didn't implement object compact, if jQuery was loaded after Yachtpo, they basically called our code, and um, well, we broke jQuery, like I said earlier. <laughs> Um, we've learned quite a few lessons from this, which I'd like to share with you in order to avoid um, this problem from anyone else. So we used to deploy at any time. Uh, there were no restrictions whatsoever. We don't do that anymore. <laughs> no longer after four and not at all on Thursdays. Um, another thing we learned, um, namespacing. <laughs> every polyfill or every method we add to JavaScript today, we keep under the Yotpo object in order to namespace our code and avoid these exact problems. Um, 
QA used to test our widgets. They used to test our widgets themselves on an embedded page without taking into consideration uh, the site itself around. Um, so as of today, that no longer happens. We do an embedded test and we do another test on a few pre-selected clients' websites. So we make sure we don't break the website functionality. Um, and another thing we learned is we run the jQuery test suite prior to each deployment. We record how many fails there were and then we run it once again on top of our code and our widget and make sure that the results match. If they don't match, at least we know we broke jQuery and we stop the deployment. And the last thing we did um, differently is we used to use mock data on our staging database. Um, that no longer happens. We use real production data, obviously sanitized. Any personal information is left out. That's it. Thank you.